Hello everyone, welcome back. This is 2 4, Tick Counting, Input Bug, and More on Timings. I'm MU222, and today the schedule will be uh, that I will talk about Input Bug first and um, ways to avoid Input Bug and some simulation of Input Bug using some different input devices. Then I will talk about some more on timings, including block event delay and piston updating properties. And finally, the most important part Tick Counting where I will show you the skill on counting uh, delay in some circuits because that will be a very important analytical skill for you when you are constructing some uh, circuits that require tight timings or when you need to understand how a circuit works. So, uh, before I start, I want to make a small announcement but I will only put this in the description or the pinned comments below, so just check that out. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so let's get started. So here we have the first topic, which will be about input bug. So what exactly is input bug? Well, it refers to the one game tick delay between pistons and other redstone components due to player input. So here I have this as an example. So if you have seen from one dash one properties of Reston Components 1, then you would know that basically activating droppers and pistons should have the same delay, which is no delay, because they are instant. And detecting from the observer, there will be two game ticks of delay for these two pistons. This isn't exactly correct if we are activating it with a player input. So say if I activate with a lever, you can see these two pistons are not in sync. That's because for the dropper case, it has one game tick less than this piston, such that this piston activates one game tick earlier than this piston. So same for deactivation actually. Now what happens when I press this button with player input instead? On activation, and you can see the activation, it still has the one game tick difference between the dropper and the piston, but it does not have the one game tick difference when the button deactivates. Now why is that? This relates to how we define as player input. So by player input, by its name, you would know that it should be related to actions that are made by the player itself. So if the action is made by the game code and it is scheduled, then what happens is that it is no longer a player input. We call this a repeater input. So on the activation of the button, this is a player input because I pressed it, that's a player input. But then when the button turns off, that is actually scheduled by the game in which this would be a repeater input instead. So both of these pistons would power at the same time for the deactivation of the button. Now for the case, if I connect it with a repeater, then things happen differently. Both of them extend at the same time for activation and deactivation. Same for the button. Now, why is that? Well, I've literally said it is a re the difference between a repeater input and a player input. So for a repeater input, the game schedules the delay, so the dropper and the piston would have the same amount of delay. And yeah, that is the normal case. It's only player inputs that has the one game tick difference. So normally you would account for the repeater input case, but then if you have some circuits that are directly connected to your player inputs, then you have to consider the cases where the dropper and the piston, for example, here will have a one game tick difference. So just be more aware of this issue here. Now, this also can explain one of the examples that I've mentioned in 2-3, uh, Tautic Priority Racing Condition and their applications, which is here. So what happens here uh, this is from the Dissecting Minecraft episode 15 at 5.46. So they used this setup and they attempted to explain Tautic priority. But then they used this button instead of this button, which causes 
uh, incorrect uh, deductions for our tautic priority. So now we can explain this using the effects of input bug. So if I press this button, now it seems like both of these repeaters uh, and this repeater with a redstone torch, they have the same delay. But then you can also see that this is connected to a piston while this is connected to only a redstone wire. So in this case, the button is connected to the atautic component here, but it's connected to a piston here. So this would cause a one game tick of difference, as we can see here. The right piston would retract the block instead of the left piston. If we uh, slow it down, you can see this retracts first before this piston. But then, if we use a repeater instead, what happens is that, well, since both of these uh, circuits have the same delay when we are using a repeater input, then we have to determine based on tautic priority. So we have this, you can see from this here, this has a higher priority to depower this piston than this circuit here. I've explained this in 2-3 already. If you're unsure of how tautic priority works, go check that out. So if I press this button instead, you will see that the left piston retracts instead. And that is the correct way of showing tautic priority in this circuit, instead of pressing this button here. So hopefully now you will see how input bug would affect things. Now, we usually count delay based on repeater input, but then it will also be sometimes useful if we can count on player input, in which I haven't introduced you to it yet. So there are actually two models when counting delay for player input. They are separately called the English model and the Chinese model. So what are the differences then? Well, the English model suggests that tautic components would lose one game tick when activated or deactivated by player input. And then the Chinese model suggests that pistons will gain one game tick of delay when activated or deactivated by a player input. That is the difference between the English and the Chinese models. So as a summary, you would know that the English model would count one game tick delay less than the Chinese model in all circuits, basically. And um, so the use of English model and Chinese model is actually based on some technical details, which I'm not going to explain here. But then the accuracy of both of these models are still under dispute. And I previously consulted two rest owners who are experts in technical details in Minecraft and asking them whether they support the English model or Chinese model basically. And they actually provide the contradicting statements. I also did a mini survey on some talented rest owners thoughts on the model and um, more people actually supported the English model than the Chinese model, which actually makes sense because English model is the main model uh, back then. But uh, Chinese model has only recently gained some popularity. And because there is still disputes between the accuracies of English model and the Chinese model, I currently will accept both models as uh, for counting the delay in circuits. So feel free to use either model to count your delay. You don't have to worry about the accuracy of the models. All you need to do is just to use the concepts from the model and to count your delay. So basically I'm treating these two models as different ways that you can count delay for player input. Anyway, so how exactly will you count it? Well, that will be in this section here where I will explain. Also, just a quick remark, uh, in case if I need to count delay on player input, I will always specify which model I'll be using to count delay for player input. So don't worry about that. Now let's take a look at some cases where we count the player input delay. So here I have this button connecting to an instant wire, connecting to a two game tick repeater to this piston. So 
we want to know the delay from this button here to this piston here. Now, for the English model, we know that Tautix will lose one game tick of delay when directly connected to the button, but then it is actually connected to a piston instead. So the instant repeater has zero game ticks of delay, and then this uh, two game tick repeater obviously has a two game tick of delay. So it will power this piston at two game ticks. So from this button to this piston, it will be two game ticks of delay under the English model. But for the Chinese model, however, we would have this instant repeater. You see, this is actually a piston. And when the input is connected to a piston, the Chinese model suggests that we should add one game tick of delay instead. So a one game tick delay for an instant repeater, and then a two game tick of delay for this repeater. So we will have three game ticks of delay from the button to the piston according to the Chinese model. Now moving on to this case, we will have just a two game tick repeated but connected to a button and then to this piston here. So the English model suggests that because all Tautic components should reduce the delay by one game tick when activated by a player input, the English model says that this will be a one game tick delay because two game tick repeated minus one game tick equals one game tick. So from the button to the piston, one game tick of delay in terms of the English model. But the Chinese model says no, we don't reduce a game tick of delay from the repeater. So it would count this as two game ticks of delay from the button to the piston. Another case would be this here. Uh, only consider the rising edge delay for now. So we will have the English model uh, that would claim that BS pistons, we don't care. So from the button to the piston, we will have a free game tick of delay. Well, true, because we will have this piston that extends this redstone block here. And the redstone block arrives here at two game ticks, but it still takes one game tick of activation delay to activate this piston. So it's a free game tick delay from the button to the piston according to the English model. But then for the Chinese model, we will see that the input is directly connected to a button, to a piston. So we need to add one game tick of delay first. Then we would count the two game tick of delay for the rest of blocks arrive here and the one game tick of piston activation delay to power this piston. So this would be in turn four game ticks of delay from this button to this piston under the Chinese model. So hopefully you will understand the differences between counting delays of the English model and the Chinese model from here. Now, we have discussed how to count the delay for uh, player inputs, but then it's also important for us to find uh, input methods that we can simulate uh, player input and repeater input. And it gets a bit more complex because we sometimes want the activation to have a player input and the deactivation to have a repeater input or vice versa. So we would end up having four combinations because we will have an activation and deactivation, that's two. And then we will have the choice of player input and repeater input. So two times two, that will be four combinations. And we want to simulate all of those situations with different circuits. So here is some. This is, will have a player input on activation and repeater input on deactivation. Now, why is that? Well, because this piston will extend this redstone block. And then the hopper will detect the redstone block at two game ticks, uh, assuming repeater input for now. So yeah, the hopper would uh, receive power at two game ticks, but the piston will only receive power at three game ticks. So there will be a one game tick of activation delay, as you see right here. But then, if we turn off this, both the hopper and the piston actually uh, the powers at the same time. So we will see them being in sync here. So this is why we say this is a player input on activation and repeater input on deactivation. It simulates that correctly. Now what if we want to do it in reverse? 
So we want a repeater input on activation and player input on deactivation. Well, instead of having a piston extending a resonant block, we just replace the resonant block with a solid block that blocks the signal transmission of resonant dust. So if we retract this piston here, then this resonant dust will power both the hopper and the piston simultaneously such that they both extend in sync. But then if we block the signal now, what happens is that this signal would be blocked basically at two game ticks and the hopper would realize at two game ticks. But then the piston still takes one game tick of piston activation delay to power to get depowered. So this piston would power one game tick earlier than this piston. So as we see right here, like so. And that is another simulation of this situation here. Now let's consider another case. If we want a player input on both activation and deactivation, what do we do then? Well, we can basically just combine these two setups and have this setup now. So we will have this sticky piston that blocks the transmission of a signal and in which we also control this sticky piston to retract the resonant block in time such that it will also simulate uh, player inputs on the activation. Yeah. So we would see here that both of them are one game tick apart on activation and deactivation of this resonant line. So yeah, it's basically just a combination from these two. So pretty simple. Also, just keep in mind, uh, in the exercises, I actually have the same, one of the questions, I have the same setup here that will ask you something about this setup, so just be aware. Now, what happens if you just want a repeater input for both activation and deactivation? The solution is, as simple as it sounds, a repeater. That's it. And both of them will activate in sync. Like so. Easy enough. So, that already concludes the four combinations that we have. Now, yes, we can simulate the four combinations for player input and repeater input on activation, deactivation, stuff, stuff, stuff. But then, we actually, the best scenario we want is to have an input that works for both player inputs and repeater inputs. So we want the circuit to work on both player inputs and repeater inputs on activation and deactivation. That is the best case scenario we have. So I didn't write anything down here, but then the basic uh, principle is that you want to make sure that from the input block, you want to only connect to either the tautic components or pistons. So you don't want to have a conjunction or a mix of tautic components and pistons that are both connected to the input block. So. Just keep in mind, this is a general rule. Of course, there are still some exceptions where you can still mix tautic components and pistons together and the circuit will still work. But following this general principle doesn't hurt uh, too much, to be honest. And if you decide to mix both tautic components and pistons together, well, you have to consider the delay that it would affect onto the contraption. So you have to be aware. You just need to count to see whether if it works for both player and repeater input. Otherwise, sticking to a general principle would be a better safe for you. So that's all for input bug. Now I will talk about block event delay. What is a block event delay? It refers to a delay in the same tick added due to block events. And it's usually by the addition of updater pistons. And this is also known as a micro tick delay. So we know that from this uh, this piston can be quasi powered by this lever here through the block. And it's updated by this piston. And this piston actually adds one block events delay to this piston. And block event delay is short for bed. So I would just say bed from now on. And although they both look powerful, Look that they are powering at the same time, the top one actually powers a bit earlier than this one, although it's still in the same tick. And we can see in here, 
we have a node block as an instant updater and as an updater piston here we would have this piston that powers first because this is an instant updater the node block and this actually adds one block event delay so if we in case want to switch the setup here the same thing would happen the one with the instant updater will always power first like so now besides uh, having saying the block event delay would add block event delay to pistons then what else would be useful for block event delay well it is mainly useful in zero tick uh, contraptions in which this series is not focused on so I would uh, leave this out of scope but then there are still some scenarios where block event delay still remains very useful indeed so I will cover some examples of them is mainly also related to zero tick generators so here I have three circuits that are basically look the same but then we have the first circuit with zero bed second circuit with one bed the third circuit with two bed but what happened then? this piston with observer powered by a two tick is actually a zero tick generator so it will power the hopper and this piston and it will power this piston as well and also but power this piston if we have zero bed here you will see that it only powers the hopper and neither these pistons will power but if we have a one bed instead we will have the hopper also power and this piston will power as well but not the bottom one surprising if we have two bed instead then all of the pistons will power so the amount of bed determines if the piston will power or not uh, if you have this uh, but powering stuff of course if you have for example a node block here then the bottom piston will also power but then since this piston ha has a bed as well so this piston would not be able to realize it so that's the reason why it just doesn't power up with one bed here now we also have the same setup in here except this one uh, it is a one tick to a piston with an observer like so and on the retraction of the observer it actually gives a zero tick to this block again so the same thing happens if we have zero bed only the top one powers if we have one bed here the top one and the middle one powers uh, let's see it again yep there you go and then if we have two bed we will have all the pistons that will power also notice that when the piston extends the observer back it's actually a one tick pulse for these pistons right here so that is one use of bed like so and uh, yeah it just determines how the pistons would behave and it's sometimes useful when you just have a chain of pistons and you want to just power one of them so it, you just add, have to add one bed and then you can have this piston that powers but not this piston so sometimes it will still be useful enough so that's enough for bed actually because the rest of the use for bed is very related to zero tick circuits which i'm not going to accept explain here so let's move on to some piston updating properties now uh, I think it's a gen general knowledge that everyone should know pistons will give updates at zero game tick like when it extends or retracts for both the piston base and the piston head but what isn't a general knowledge is that the piston base and the piston head will also give updates at a later interval in some situations and that is what we are going to discuss here so a piston base will provide updates at zero game tick when uh, extending 
but when the piston base retracts, it will provide updates at zero and two game ticks. Well, that is for droppers. But then for pistons, it will be zero and three game ticks. So here I have this setup for you as an example. We have this that turns off uh, after four game ticks, including this resonant torch, assuming repeat input. And uh, we have this one that uh, gets but uh, powered instead. What will happen? This depowers later than this piston, actually. If we set it to a 2, then this piston depowers earlier than this one. So we can conclude that this is actually an odd uh, game take of the light, basically. So, this would depower at um, 5 game ticks. And it's between 4 game ticks and 6 game ticks, obviously. <laughs> so, we can also conclude that this piston will give updates to this piston as 0 game ticks and 3 game ticks. Well, it's only 3 game ticks here. But then we all know that 0 game ticks will also give updates when retracting. And for the dropper case, we also have the similar setup here, but then now we see the two pistons extend at the same interval. So what this means is that it provides the dropper a two, a two game tick of delay of an update. So we can see here, two game ticks, two game ticks, two game ticks, two game ticks. So two game ticks of delay if we are considering our uh, droppers, for example rather than pistons. So that is for the piston base case. Uh, this is only for retraction, by the way, I have to emphasize, not the extension. The extension only has one update. But then what if we want to have the extension to do the updates for us? Well, we now rely on piston head. So it's basically in reverse for piston head compared to the piston base. The piston head, when it retracts, it will only give an update at zero game tick, but then when it extends, it will give an update at zero game tick and three game ticks. For pistons, that is. But then for droppers, it will be zero game ticks and two game ticks. So here, we would have this setup here, and then we can see this piston powers earlier than this piston, but then if I turn it to three, you can see this piston powers earlier than this piston. So we can conclude that the updater here actually updates this piston three game ticks after. So we see four game ticks to this piston, and then we will have two game ticks, three game ticks for this updater to this piston here, which is but powered by this here, by the way. So that is for the piston case. For the dropper, however, you can see they are still in sync. Again. So, the reason is simple en enough. This four game ticks to this dropper, two game ticks, and then it provides an update after two game ticks to this dropper. So four game ticks for this. So, yeah. You can see, again, the piston activation delay is still up is applies here so you can see dropper is one game tick earlier than the piston for due to piston activation delay now we have discussed about piston base and piston head what we haven't discussed is if we have a sticky piston that extends a block or retracts a block this is a bit special now when extending this block, we actually have a free game tick of delay for pistons. So you can see there's a delay from it. this piston to this piston compared to this piston, but then if we have this as two, then we have this earlier than this one. So we can conclude that this block here uh, has a free game tick delay, basically, for piston status. So yeah. Also, when the block retracts, it actually instantly updates. So this is also why you can see this retracts earlier than this one. But then for droppers, uh, again, this block will give a two game tick delay of update. 
and then a zero game six of delay for retraction. So extend will be two game six, retract will be zero game six. So, which is why you see both of them in sync, and then the retraction this power earlier than this one, like so. What about a piston retracting a block? Well, it's again exactly the reverse of this scenario here. But we also have to consider that the piston head is also affecting the update. So we need to add the effects of this scenario to the piston head scenario here. What the result will be is that no matter the activation or the activation, basically extending or retracting, we will always have the, this position here. It will always update at 0 game 6 and 3 game 6 for pistons, and then 0 game 6 and 2 game 6 for droppers. Always, no matter extending or retracting. So you can see here, this has a 1 game tick of delay. So if I set it to 2, you can see this power, E powers earlier. And then for the dropper case, they just power the same tick, like so. And you can see also when this extends back, you can see this here also gets updated again. So they still power the same tick. Okay, so we can see this in slow motion. Yeah, you can also see that for the extension of these pistons, this is two game ticks, while this is three game ticks. So this will always be one game tick later than this, essentially. Yeah, like so. So that is all for the uh, piston updating property. Now also notice that when I say that uh, the pistons extend, what I meant is that uh, it refers to extension by a pulse with duration greater than or equal to 1.5 tick or 3 game ticks. And the case would be slightly different if the extension is actually 0 to 1 tick or 0 to 2 game ticks. Uh, you can use some common sense to deduce uh, things from it. Uh, the delays of the updates from it. It is still pretty simple. But then, uh, it's slightly different. You can always experiment this on yourself. So, not going to go too far on this. We would now move on to uh, one other thing. Is that Pistons will actually self-update itself. It will always self-update after 3 game ticks on extension or retraction. So here I have this Preston Torch and a 2 tick repeater. Then it will just... It, retracts and extend back. If I set it to 3, however, this will not extend back by itself. Same case right here. So this is indeed a free game to take delay for this piston here, and it still self updates, and it will extend back. So yeah. Now, we have some other properties, because this piston is not only self updates itself, but then it will also self-update when it gets extended or retracted. So we have this here as an example. We have this piston that will extend here and then two game takes after. We will have this piston that extends. So it will still self-update. Like so. For the retraction case, that's also uh, sorry, this is also still the extension, but then this will be a free game take of the line now. It's still the same. For the retraction case, still the same. This is two game six of delay for this piston and still powers. And then for this case, then this is three game six of delay and it still powers. Also, if I turn this to two, it will not work. And again, if I turn this to two, it will also not work. Like so. That already concludes everything I want to talk about 
Pissing updates and self updating property. Now I will head on to the most important part of the video tick counting. Tick counting refers to the ability to count tick, uh, basically the timings of individual circuits and piston behaviors, and it is a very really useful analytic skill because some circuits require tight timings to work. And this also helps us to explain why some circuits work and why some circuits doesn't. And in the following, I would use um, Skyflip's uh, flush and seamless downwards vertical triple piston extender to explain how we would do tick counting. And um, there are some things to know because there are some principles we need to follow and especially we have also some considerations for activation delay now if we want to be super accurate about pistons we have to not consider activation delay when extending or retracting what this means is that uh, we consider pistons extend and retract in two game ticks and we will only consider activation delay if we need it uh, to explain some phenomena. I'll, it will make more sense a bit later. But then, for some people, they usually don't like uh, the exclusion of activation delay, and they would like to include it. So they would want to say that pistons extend or retract in free game six. Although this is not very accurate, but then it still helps explaining in some cases for some people. So I will try to use both approaches to explain to you how to counting works. So, first off, we actually want to know the delay for these four observers, and it's actually shown here. So we have this, uh, assuming repeated input again, we have 2 to 3 or 4 to 6 game 6, 3 to 4 or 6 to 8 game 6, 4 to 5 or 8 to 10 game 6, and this actually has a double pole, so 5 to 6, a to 9 or game, the game 6 are shown here. So that is the delay for these observers. And um, do remember them now or otherwise it might be a bit confusing for you. But don't worry, you can always refer to like for example take a screenshot now, I don't know. And you can always refer to this if you want to. Uh, I also highly suggest you to refer to the documents in case I explain some things a bit unclear because the document is actually more, a bit more in detail uh, for explaining stuff. So uh, check out the documents, it will help you. So let's start our journey on counting this triple piss extenders timing. So. Everything from now on, we would assume repeater inputs. We would um, we would consider player inputs a bit later. Okay. So t equals zero. This extends. So this piston will extend from t equals zero to t equals one or two game ticks right here. And then we would have this observer that powers this piston from two to three or four to six game ticks. And here comes the special parts. We want to basically explain how this piston can one tick to spit out the block. So let's see why exactly is the case. Now, if we are actually extending the block, so the block should be here instead. If we give this piston a one tick, although the bottom piston will arrive at three or six game ticks, the block underneath it can only be extended at 3.5 or seven game ticks. Why? We can have a similar illustration here, which will help explain things a bit better. So let's say a zero six for this piston. What will happen then? You, most people probably know that this would instantly push this piston to this position. So this position, so so the piston already arrives here instantaneously. 
but not for the block. Because if we see this in slow motion, you see the block actually pushes later, or it arrives later. And the block will always need three game ticks in order to be extended again. Although the block still arrives at two game ticks, that's for sure, it would still need the one game tick of piston activation delay in order to be extended again. So that is the reason why this piston can only extend from 3.5 or 7 game ticks if the block is up here. So it will be this in, in this case. But then, if the block is already down here, what will happen is that the piston as here will already be able to extend from T equals 3 or 6 game ticks. Which is why I said here, this piston can extend from... Uh, it, it will extend from 3 or 6 game ticks when the, the block is originally down or 3.5 or 7 game ticks when the block is originally up. I will explain the 4.5 or 9 game ticks uh, in a bit. So, now we know that um, this piston will do a 1 tick. Uh, and then it will depower at T equals 3 or 6 game 6. So you can see this retracts from T equals 3 or 6 game 6. And to T equals 4 or 8 game 6. Now, we say that the retraction is 2 game 6. However, we still need to account for the piston activation delay now. Because the piston can only extend from T equals 4.5 or 9 game 6. This is because of the piston activation delay. It's basically similar to this case. So, we will have this piston that extends from T equals 4.5 or 9 game ticks due to this observer now. This observer powers from 4 to 5 or 8 to 10 game ticks. So, T equals 4.5, it can definitely power the bottom piston. Because this rest and line is a solid block. So, the middle piston will extend again from T equals 4.5 or 9 game 6. And the extension, remember that the piston head can update the block beneath it. We will have this piston that gets updated at T equals 4.5 or 9 game 6. And the piston will retract from T equals 4.5 to T equals 5.5. And if we calculate here as a result, if the block is originally up, this is 3.5 to 4.5 or 7 to 9 game ticks. This receives a 1 tick pulse or a 2 game tick pulse. And this also explains why the piston when it's up here, it will spit out the block at this position. If the block is originally down, however, we would have um, T equals 3 to T equals 4.5 or 6 to 9 game ticks. So this piston actually receives a free game tick pulse instead. But then it doesn't really matter because we are retracting the block anyways. So no one really cares too much. And this is also why I said here. Middle piston updates the bottom piston such that it spits out the block when the block is originally up. Okay, so this is actually the most important part explained for the extent. Now, some things to notice, this will finish retraction at T equals 5.5, but then it can only be retracted from T equals 6 or 12 game 6, again, due to piston activation delay. Notice the middle piston, however. We say that this extends from T equals 4.5 to T equals 5.5 or 9 to 11 game 6, but then the piston is actually at this position, where it's butt powered from this western lamp. So the piston will not realize that it is depowered until T equals 6 or 12 game ticks. So the piston will only retract from T equals 6 or 12 game ticks. And this is also the reason why it is able to retract the bottom piston because it is being butt powered. And now it will retract from T equals 6 to T equals 7 to, or 12 to 14 game 6. We don't care about the piston activation delay. It's not important anyways. 
and the bottom piston will receive a pulse from the second pulse of the slamp here and it will extend from 8 to 9 or 16 to 18 game ticks and then it will retract from 9 to 10 or 18 to 20 game ticks we don't care about the piston activation delay again because it's not useful the timings aren't that tight that we should consider and right at t equals 10 to 11 or 20 to 22 game ticks this piston will retract this piston here and the middle piston will extend via this whoops via this uh, observer here such that um, this will extend from 12 to 13 and then it will retract from 13 to 14 and after retracting we again have to consider piston activation delay so this piston can only extend from t equals 14.5 or 29 game 6 and it does extend from 14.5 to 15.5 29 or 31 game 6 equivalent from the butt power of this redstone lamp and then it would retract it can retract from t equals 16 or 32 game 6 because it is butt powered so it will retract from 16 to 17 or 32 to 34 game 6 and then it completely retracts at t equals 17.5 or 35 game 6 if we consider the piston activation delay and this is also the reason why we can conclude that this entire triple press extender is 1.75 seconds if we are using a stone button if we do not calculate the activation delay, then it will be 1.7 seconds only. So this is the complete explanation of how we do tick counting under the piston timing approach, that is. Now you might have noticed this entire explanation is very long indeed. And you can see I have to use a lot of piston diagrams to show you how it exactly works and this also means it's very time costly and to be honest sometimes it's unnecessary and confusing to consider timings like this because of piston activation delay because like you see when I mentioned multiple times that the piston can only extend from t equals 4.5 or 9 game 6 like in this example here and yeah and some butt powering stuff so you know it's it's sometimes a bit more confusing for, for some people and we can actually sometimes simplify our explanation a bit we don't actually have to consider every single piston movement and their exact uh, timing we can just pick out some useful information and to just address it so now I would uh, basically use another approach and this approach basically takes references from circuit timings and makes conclusions from them. This is, uh, I say for now, the quick tick counting approach. And in this approach, I would consider the piston activation delays. Basically what this means is that we consider pistons retract in free game ticks. And the timings of the piston extension is actually irrelevant. We don't have to get now this approach uh, compromises accuracy for simplicity so although the timing itself isn't very accurate because um, for some people with more technical background they will argue that pistons do retract pit, uh, blocks uh, in two game six but then in order to re-extend again you still have to calculate the uh, piston activation delay so we just simplify it and say that pistons retract in free game six. So yeah, although it's not accurate, it's useful for uh, timing calculations. And um, let's count the timings again. So we can actually don't e not even bother to use this setup here. I can just uh, show you here. So the top pistons extend at t equals zero. 
we have this. And then the middle piston here will get one tick by this observer at t equals 2 or 4 game ticks, and it will fully retract at t equals 4.5 or 9 game ticks. Uh, I hope you know why, because 3 plus 1.5 equals 4.5. And then the bottom piston will extend at t equals 3 or 6 game ticks when the block is down. And t equals 3.5 or 7 game ticks when the block is up. So, which I've already explained previously why this piston can spit out the block. Because it will be 3.5 or 7 game 6 when the block is originally up. So it can spit. But then it will be 3 or 6 game 6, but then we don't care. And yeah, anyways. So, uh, assume the block is retracted upwards now. And notice that the middle piston is getting butt powered by this redstone lamp from this observer. So we would have this that extends at t equals 4.5 or 9 game 6, which updates this piston such that it will retract, like so. And, yeah, it will update the bottom piston such that it one ticks if the block is originally up. And this piston, no matter if the block is up or down, it will fully retract at t equals 6 or 12 game ticks. And this is also again useful because this piston is actually butt powered. So it receives power at t equals 4.5. It doesn't realize at t equals 5. Uh, it will only realize it at t equals 6 or 12 game ticks. And the middle piston first is able to retract this bottom piston. And it will fully retract at t equals 7.5 or 15 game ticks. And from the second pulse of this, we know that this piston gets one tick from 8 to 9, or 16 to 18 game ticks, we don't really care about that. Now, and then t equals 10, this will retract. And then we have the middle piston that will get one tick by this observer again. So, one tick. And this piston will only be able to extend at t equals 14.5, which it does from this observer. And as it is butt powered, it and it's activated at 14.5, it will only realize by itself to depower at six, uh, at 16 or 40, 32 game ticks. And it will now fully retract at t equals 17.5 or 35 game ticks. And you see the, ex the entire sim explanation is much simpler. Like I basically just speed run the explanation of the timings. So, that is how you do the quick ticking approach. Uh, it isn't that much different from just having the exact piston timing, but then we can always skip some minor details, which we don't really need to care because uh, some timings aren't that tight and we just all, all we need to know is that uh, it just extends and retracts and the pulse length that it gets received. So those minor details, you can always omit some of them. And you might be wondering, hey, we are all we all along we are assuming repeated input. What happens for input back then? Like when we activate it by play input. Well, notice that we are activating this with a button, so we only need to consider the extension. And we said from before that we can use either the English or Chinese model for counting the uh, player input delay. And what would be the best model that would count for this? Now, since the circuit itself uses a lot of tilted components, we basically want to add one game tick to pistons because that would simplify our calculations by a bit. So, which is why I would use the Chinese model here. And let's compare the difference. So, there will only be player input bug uh, on activation of the button. Because uh, when the button is turned off, then it's actually a repeating input. So, it doesn't really matter. So, this piston would power at t equals 0 0.5 or 1 game tick. And this piston 
can extend at t equals two or for game six, which is exactly the power, the beginning of this power. So it doesn't affect anything already, and we can exactly conclude from here is that there is no in, uh, and there are no any special effects between player inputs and repeater input because we already conclude that this will still does its thing normally. In fact, you see that this piston and this observer, they have two ticks or four game ticks of delay in terms of repeater input. We can already conclude that there are, there is no special effects. So, yeah. Of course, you can always use the English model, but then it will be a bit more complex. So you would need to say that this powers at zero and then this would uh, it would receive power at um, 1.5 ticks or three game ticks and then you basically just have to reduce one game tick for every other component which would sometimes be a bit more time costly but the principle is basically the same the logic is basically the same so yeah that's why I say you can use both models just at your convenience so uh, depending on which model you think is more convenient just use it I don't really care about the accuracy of the models, in fact. Now, hopefully you will learn something from this tick counting section. Um, it is actually quite an advanced and more complex skill, but then I'm sure that through practice you will uh, learn better and to be able to dev start to develop your analytical skill in Redstone. And this is also the reason why I also designed some exercises for you to practice on um, some tick counting. And before I head on to that, I want to give a quick shout out to a useful list, uh, which is also regarding on input bug. It is um, Spacewalker's bug report on input bug. So you can refer to my documents um, for the link if you want to check that out in detail. Uh, it mentions a bit more in detail on what exactly is a player input and what the Tauti components are in a form of list. So it has some useful information for you if you really want to take a look at, at that in detail. But yeah, anyways, we would now head on to the exercises. I'll just briefly talk over them. And there are some very interesting stuff about uh, this course's exercise. This is because it involves in a lot of um, explanations for tick counting. So the exercises in 2-4, it requires a lot more word answers than actually building circuits. In fact, there's only one sub-question that requires to you to build a circuit. So, yeah. Uh, let's take the first question as an example. We will see that you you will always see some terms that will be repeated over and over. So for example here, I wanted you to explain why the extender does not fully extend when pressing the left button in terms of timings and state the timing of the model use. And when you see the sentence state the timing of the model use, that automatically means we are considering play inputs. So you just have to say which model you're using and to just explain the entire extended circuit in terms of its timings. So you can always ex explain the timings uh, in your own way, to be honest, there is no right or wrong. But then as long as you are able to explain the key elements of how the extender works in terms of the timings is already okay. And yeah. And you can see again in terms of timings. So a lot of these questions are related to timings. And uh, again, actually from this setup, I already said that it will be used in the, the exercise in which it is actually shown here. So you can check that out. And the last three questions are all related to my personal experience. So I hope you will learn something from that. And um, also develop your skill on avoiding input bug issues because 
uh, avoiding input bug issues is very important. It helps your legitimacy of uh, your contraption because currently we do we do not accept um, contraptions that are affected by input bug basically. So uh, making sure your contraption work in both player input and repeater input is very important. So yeah, uh, get brushed up on these skills, I guess. And I would like to specifically talk about these two questions. These are the more in interesting ones. So I would horizontal triple because extend them. So this is actually a very challenging question. There's an asterisk here. So uh, you can see sometimes I would say assuming repeated input is used because I don't want you to get too deep in some timings and also for setting the questions a bit easier. And originally I wanted you to basically just explain the entire thing, but then it will be very hard for most of you. So I have quietly um, separated this question into some few uh, sub questions that um, you can just uh, try on your own to explain the circuit uh, bit by bit such that you would be able to know how the entire thing works instead of just telling you to explain the entire thing once and for all in which it might be a very hard work for some people to do. So yeah and um, just have some questions here and there are two modules here so when I say you need not explain the overlapping parts of the modules, basically what I mean is that because you can see this uh, half section is exactly the same as this half section. So you don't have to explain this all over again because it's meaningless. So you need not explain that. And then there are some interesting questions some are related to tick counting, some are related to input bug, and um, because you have learned tick counting already, so I wanted you to use your knowledge of tick counting and apply it in explaining some effects of input bug. So there are some questions on it. And um, there's also a very special case here where I before said to you that uh, the general rule is to avoid the input block to be connected to both tautic components and pistons. But then this circuit actually uh, violates that. But um, I also told you that the contraption still works with player input. So I'm just ex telling you to explain why again in terms of timings. And yeah. And the last question, uh, justify the speed of the extender uh, when retracting, assuming repeater input is used. And there's some things to uh, note from here. So uh, you can see the sentence, consider pistons fully retract in free game ticks. What do I mean by that? This is that if I, for example, want to retract this piston here, uh, assuming repeater input, I would say that this piston fully retracts at three game ticks or 0 0.15 seconds. So instead of saying 0 0.1 second, I would say it's 0 0.15 seconds. That's the difference. Because as I've said already, uh, pistons do retract blocks in two game ticks, but then there's still one game tick of activation delay, which means you are unable to power this piston again until after the activation delay is over. So this is also the reason why I wanted you to count the speed um, assuming pistons retract blocks in free game ticks. So that is the thing. The next thing is that when I say justify the speed, all I need you to do is just to state the speed of the extender. You don't have to explain why just say how fast this extender retracts, basically. This one, however, is a bit different. There are only three sub-questions for this, and it's a bit easier than the one on the left. So again, I wanted you to explain uh, 
some certain piston, for example this one, I want you to explain the pulse length received by this piston with the resonant block. And also similarly, there's also another piston here, this piston with a resonant block. They are marked by yellow wall. So I want you to explain in terms of timings how these work and what's the pulse length received by this uh, sticky piston. And then we would move on. Uh, this is a bit more challenging because basically now I want you not only to justify the speed of the double piston extender when uh, the input is activated, so the lever turns on basically, and essentially the block is get retracted upwards. So I want you to justify the speed and also consider the pistons fully retract in free game six again. Now, not only do I want you to justify the speed in this question, I also want you to explain this in terms of timing. And again, assuming repeated input is used. And the third question is just um, testing you something regarding this updated piston versus an instant updater here. And the fourth question is that do models behave the same when using player input versus using repeated input? Now, I don't want you to explain this in terms of timings. I want you to explain by considering the components connected to the input block. So I don't want you to count the timings of the circuit. Instead, I want you to use some uh, theorized assumptions like what I've said before. So actually basically just asking you if the input block is uh, connecting to components that might result in an input bug issue or if it does not. So yeah, you just have to consider the components connected to the input block and you don't need to explain anything in terms of the timings, basically. Also, this um, is a free, actually taken from a 3x3 circuit by me, Brajev, and special thanks to Timmerman8. So yeah, just giving a credit here. And um, good luck on these exercises. It's a bit more unusual and then a bit more challenging, again. But uh, doing these exercises will definitely help you on brushing up your skill on tick counting. And due to the significant difference from this exercise comparing to the previous exercises, and especially there is only one sub-question that, on that asks you to build a circuit, uh, and the other basically requires a word answer, I also will provide you another document which lists out all the answers related to the questions. So you can always check that here. And also the answer to this here is of course at the back. So don't worry about that. And yeah, you can also see that at the back these gold blocks, which supposedly represent the answers, I will just tell you to refer to the documents. So um, yeah, just go ahead and follow the link in the description below and refer to the word documents, basically. Again, once again, good luck on these exercises, and I hope you learned something today. And thank you for watching this video on 2 4. The next video will be 2 5, resonance changes from 1.11 to uh, 1.18, I think. And uh, I'm still deciding on whether I should use a PowerPoint presentation or uh, just use another Minecraft gameplay format. But uh, yeah, so stay tuned. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in 2-5 again. So yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, hope you learned something.